Okay, we're live. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Talia, your Creative Confidence Mentor. I know it's been a while since I've been here, but Happy New Year. <laughs> so last year um, got tough. So the last quarter, I kind of, I actually planned on taking my birthday month off, which is October. And then other things happened. So the rest of the year, I kind of just took a break. I had to take a rest. Um, but I hope you're excited. Welcome back. If you're, um, you know, if you've been here on my channel, if you've been here before, welcome back. We're back into junk journaling. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm glad that you found this. I hope it helps you. Um, so tonight we're actually going to be jumping into some junk journaling that's going to help you with creating a vision board. The reason why I'm doing this is because I found out that there are actually people who have a hard time with creating the vision board or it's overwhelming. Uh, not just because you're creating for an entire year um, or a piece for an entire year, but it's also how do you know what you're going to put on there for the year. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples of what it looks like without planning or if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, one of my first, I have a couple of my vision boards from a couple years ago. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because we're going to be merging the two. So this is a junk journaling session that's going to help you prepare for a vision board party or to create your vision board if you're doing it on your own. So this is actually from 2019. And you see a whole lot of words on here, right? Just all kinds of different words, different numbers, different meanings. But it wasn't really inspirational or motivational because I was just reading. Um, but this was an idea of what I wanted, the sort of things that I was looking to. A lot of it, though, were goals that were not realistic not for a year <laughs> so i went back to the drawing board and um when i found when i wrote down what i actually wanted and thought about it for the year if it was attainable for me or if it was something that I actually wanted to prioritize prioritize for the year um and once i did it got easier for me to actually organize or to create an improved vision board. And so this is actually what I had for uh, 2019. So this looks a whole lot better. It actually gives me an idea of what I'm looking forward to, what I'm striving for. There isn't too many words on here, but the words that are on here have a meaning or they're just statements. Um, so yeah, established was my word for the year of 2019. So you can see that on the, across the top. Okay. So that's the difference between planning for it and not knowing what you're doing. Here's another one that, um, you know, because of that experience, I was like, okay, uh, when 2020 comes, I'm actually going to plan what I'm going to put on my vision board. I prayed about it. Like, what am I going to work on in each area or what are the things that I'm going to focus on? Um, I started with creating backgrounds. So this is actually how I have used my junk journaling experience in the creative process. Uh, and applied it to my vision board. So 2020 was the first year that I did the planning. I mean, you should always plan for your vision board, but <laughs> when I was intentional about what I was going to put on my vision board. So this is how it turned out. You can see the big difference. A lot of it has background to it. That's what makes the biggest difference. So I took a lot of cardstock paper and placed them around different areas of the board. I also went through magazines and found images and pictures that kind of, you know, motivated me or inspired me. So you see like the honeycomb up here, this orange. I like the honeycomb. And so that's up there. And I just used contrasting stuff and put it all together. My 2020, I actually used, let me see. Sorry here. Let me see if this one is offset. It. Maybe. Not so much. I don't know which one's causing the glare. Is it this one? Okay. So yeah, so I used um, paper. I actually cut out 2020 from cardstock paper. Um, I was trying to focus on my time management. <laughs> so that's on there. My word for 2020 was impact. And I actually went in with the intention of writing my book. And then I got into P2P and found out that it's not we're just writing my book that's going to cause impact. But my YouTube channel, that's actually when it was birthed, was in 2020. So here we are. Thank you for joining me on my art journey. <laughs> now you get to join me in creating. So, yeah, this is the difference of the growth. 
Um, but just because you can create a fabulous vision board doesn't mean it's always the same. So this one is from this past year, 2021. For a majority of the year, I had no clue on what I was doing. Uh, you see some tape, just random thing. <laughs> so this is what it looks like. I had a galaxy background. Um, and what I was doing for the first month or so, maybe maybe more than that. I'll say maybe three months. The first three months of 2020, my word was explore. So it's up here on the top. And I was exploring who I was, um, how it was going to grow. I thought it was going to be about travel because, you know, we thought things were going to open up <laughs> again. <laughs> They didn't, I didn't travel, but my exploring actually had to do not with the external world or like my environment around me, but everything internal. So that was, yeah, lots of for me. Um, for <laughs> this number here, it says 650 because I was focusing on my finances and that was the credit score I was aiming for, 650. I exceeded it and that's at 673 right now. So, um, I don't know if that's personal or what it matters, but anyway, <laughs> that's what it is. Um, these are some motivational quotes or once I started looking at what I wanted to do, I was, you can't see it because it's ran in the same color as the board. And that was kind of my intention was that this is between me and God. Um, so anyway, what I was going to say is that the first three months without knowing what I was doing, I was literally like writing into the paper <laughs> with my finger. I was just like, this is what I want. I would go into details about what it's going to look like, what it would feel like, how I would feel. Um, so instead of saying I want to be or I want to do or I hope that this will happen or I'm working towards something, I would write it in the statement of it already occurring. Like, um, like this one, my credit score is 650. Um, I'm going to have a new job or whatever. And then you got to put it in details on what you want. So that's how I started it with like <laughs> just writing it on the board with my finger. Like, this is what I want. These are my intentions. And then as they were happening, so later in the year, as things happened of what I wanted, I was writing, this is what the tape is. It's like the stuff that did happen and what I did learn from it um, and the plans that I was going to continue doing based on what was happening for me. These are like plans that I have to continue on. And these are going to transfer over to my 2022 vision board. So I, I was just showing you what my past vision boards have looked like, kind of as an example of what it can look like without planning, and also oops, also what it can look like once you do plan and you know what you're going to put on it. Um, as far as junk journaling, though, um, it can be, it's, it's basically a vision board in the book. And I, the reason why I call them junk journal is because that's what I learned them as when I was in seventh grade, I think it was, that's when I was introduced to junk journaling. So that's how I've always known it. What I have found out is that they're also referred to as creative book ideas or idea books, visual journals, um, art journals. I think that's it. But I think I might be starting to refer to these as visual journals or visual journaling because when I say junk journaling, it turns people off because they hear the word junk. <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually because, like the instructions that I said, when you come and join this session, make sure that you have your journal, which can be a notebook or an old book. And I'm going to show you here in a, a few, in a moment. But um, your junk journal or your journal and all your crafting supplies and everything and anything that you can think of. Hopefully you can use some things or reuse some things or repurpose some things that you wouldn't have even thought to use as an art project or in creating crafts and stuff like that. So here we go. There's a few from previous years. So these are when I was in middle school. This is an old textbook or an old encyclopedia. And I just cut into the book itself and wrote on it. I also use a like a I used a knife to cut around it and I actually cut out the shape that I wanted, which is this cloud of clouds. <laughs> and then I glued it on. So it's actually smooth. It's on in the cover and not on the cover. Um, and this was basically my favorite color is blue. So everything blue was on here and I was just collecting different shapes and different patterns. And then I just put them all back on there. Again, the method is to cover the page or the background first, and then you can put on there whatever you need. In this case, the page or the intention of the page was that I was 
using blue as my background. And then I just found small images that I related to at the time or that I liked. So you see the T for my name. The frog is on there because that's actually my clan. I'm native from the Zuni tribe and we go by our clans. I'm a frog and child of a crow. So if any of my relatives are out there, hi. <laughs> right. So yeah, and this is actually an insert. So I tore out two pages. Oh, sorry, this is too low. Actually, let me remove this banner. It might help a little bit. Give us some more space. There we go. There we go. So I tore two pages and um, I cut it. So I, I used two pages. How would I explain this to you? Let's say I used two pages back to back and I cut them in half. So I cut them in half and it left me with the top portion of the page which I then glued together with popsicles. Oh, you can actually see, look, it's coming apart. There's popsicle sticks <laughs> to give it a frame or stability to make it thick. And then I just created on top of that. So it can be everything, anything you want it to be. This was actually a calendar, 2005, 2006. Look at how old this is, but it says book seven. So this is like the, the seventh book I was creating and in the year 2005, <laughs> I don't know where I was, maybe high school. Um, so yeah, I used an old planner or calendar and I really just care for the quotes. There's some inspirational or motivational quotes up here. And this was the mo probably the simplest junk journal I did. I just basically tore up construction paper and glued it on. So this is where my abstract art probably began, <laughs> began the beginnings of my abstract art. <laughs> All right, so this is a visual journal or a junk journal, whichever you want to refer to it as. This is also one that I started and created at our ladies night a couple months ago. So it was a journal that was given to me and I got to decorate on it. I love flying, so you're gonna see the airplane here, Buzz Lightyear and the hot air balloon. Uh, these are some felt numbers. That's my age, or I'm 33, so I have that on there. And then Wonder Woman, because she flies too. Creating, of course, and my initials. So there's that. And then on the inside, I just, you know, created. So here's some pages, some papers. So this is what junk journaling is, or can be. This is actually from my plan. I was creating a painting for the Sweet Life Cafe, and these were the images that I was using as inspiration. So they went into the book as well. All right. So many different things you can do when it comes to visual journaling. And because we're merging it with our junk journal, I mean, sorry, with our vision board, we're going to have a lot of fun. All right, so I'm going to put these aside. And I'm just going to share a couple of references with you that I've used or that helped me. Um, you're going to hear a lot of different names of different people. Um, some might say I'm like, you know, just plugging everybody and that's fine because I didn't get here by myself. I, like I mentioned, I was riding into, I was <laughs> riding into the galaxy. <laughs> Manifested. I was riding into my board of what I wanted to work on and what I was focusing on. And that God brings you people that will help you along your journey. And that's exactly what happened. And so with the coaching and mentorship from Patrice Washington, that's where I was able to start focusing on my goals and helping me to focus on things that had a certain area or were part of a certain area of my life. And she has the six pillars. And that's what I'm going to be using as my or what I do use as my um, template on the areas that I focus on. So here is actually her book. They told you plug. Uh, Patrice Washington, Redefine Wealth for Yourself. She has the six pillars. So the first one is your fit pillar. Then you have your people, people pillar, your um, space pillar, which is your environment, your home, your workspace, your wherever you're at, your prayer room, uh, the faith pillar, work pillar, and the money pillar. So. All of those were actually areas where I created goals for this year. And in, I guess, um, 
combination with that. If you see the links in the description, I also have a link to this passion and purpose workbook. This is by Courage Molina. I'm in her courage, what is it? Courageous Faith Membership Program. And this was actually one of the studies that we went through for December. So we were able to reflect on our past year and see what we accomplished. We even sat down and wrote about what we didn't meet or the goals that we made but didn't meet and why. Um, a lot of mine had to do with I was focused on one thing and then things turned, um, but, you know, lined up with what I was initially focused on and then moving forward. So I was able to sit down and track everything that I did. You guys, I created, was it 54 paintings in the year of 2021? So that's pretty cool. That's a lot of practice. <laughs> Some of them were fails, but I still counted them because other people still appreciated them and took them as the art that they are. So anyway, um, going on, we were able to. So from there, once you reflect on your year, um, it's going to help you to see what worked for you, what didn't, and maybe what you can continue doing if it worked. And maybe either shift on where your focus is at or change the goal entirely if it didn't work out for you. And then once you have your goals, again, my goals were with the six pillars that I have from uh, Patrice Washington. So what I did is I created big goals. Like at the end of the year, what do you want? Or where do you want to be? Where do you see yourself? So for me, my fit pillar goals were having to do with uh, working out. So for the past few years, I've been mostly focusing on my emotional health and my well-being. So that also helped. I mean, it still worked fine. Like you're trying to lose weight. Sometimes it's your mindset. So sometimes with what's going on up here can affect your physical body. And, and also, you know, once it drops from your head to your heart and then you carry it out in life. So, but um, I was focused more on my emotional and mental health for the past few years. And this year, I'm um, actually, my word for the year is emerge. And I'm, my inner athlete is emerging this year. So I'm focusing on my spinning, which was going to be for my cardio and my stamina and push-ups and squats. So, you know, just basic stuff, but it's to get me to keep working out and grow consistent. So my big goal at the end of the year is that I'm a runner because I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm preparing, or I want to prepare for the Around the Crown Marathon that happens here in Charlotte in 2023. So I know that I can't do that this coming year by May. That's not enough time for me to train and get ready. So that would be how you determine if this goal is for this year or if it's feasible, if it's going to be something that you can actually attain. So I can't do that by me. So <laughs> instead, I'm going to allow myself to progress and grow in my strength and my endurance. And then by 2023, I should be ready if I stick to the plan. So that's my big goal. That's going to be my inspiration of when I don't feel like working out, I'm going to remember in 2023, I'm not going to be able to run that marathon if I don't do the work today. <laughs> um, so I actually have it broken down. So I, that's my big goal, right? My big goal is to run around the um, the crown, or which is Charlotte, and um, broke broken down into quarters. I was able to focus on like the beginning of the year, which is now I'm going to try and build my stamina. So I'm going to start working on my spin bike. I would try and build up my stamina to run 30 minutes nonstop. Once I achieve that, then I'm going to progress to add 15 minutes to that where I can do that nonstop. Um, along with that, I'm going to continue my squats. We did a squat challenge in December. I think we started at 20. I think it was a small number that we were able, you know, you're able to do it. Um, started at 20 and each day we added five. Uh, there were breaks or rest days every other day three or four days, something like that. But when you came back, you continued. You keep going on, you add 25, uh, sorry, you add five. So the beginning of the month, we started with 20, and then we were able to make bigger leaps at the end of the month, and we ended with 120. So pretty good. And I'm going to carry that same pattern into my push-ups and my squats and my spinning. So see, you see how I was able to take that big old, I got to get ready for a marathon to I'm just going to do these things every day and grow little by little. 
and then I'll be able to achieve the big goal without feeling like it was a whole mission. <laughs> all right. And then for my people pillar, you know, those kind of things, I have all my goals written out. So as I did that, as I broke down what I was going to do and how I was going to achieve it or to break it into tasks that were more achievable, I was able to then write my declarations. Remember, I was saying, you're not going to write, um, I hope I can do this or I want to run the crown in 2023. You know, it's going to say, I am running the crown in 2023. I am preparing for this. I am, you know, I'm drinking more water. I'm, you know, you're, you're adding this. So um, for me, I had to cut down on soda. I started writing my I am statements as I, I rarely drink soda. Um, I enjoy fruit smoothies. I drink water even when I'm not thirsty. <laughs> And a, a motivation with that, or like um, if you're someone like me who doesn't really like water or it's hard to drink water, I had to look up benefits as to why water is good for you. And the one that I liked is I drink water because it cleans my body and moisturizes my skin from the inside out. So that's a benefit of drinking water and it's going to keep me drinking water. Um, also with this, with working out is my sleep. I'm going to be getting better sleep or I have been getting better sleep. So Therefore, I'm going to keep this up because I am seeing the results. I do see progress happening and it's going to keep me going. Had it not worked out, I would have popped like, let's say I was adding 20, 20 squats a day. That would be crazy some days. You know, if you go from 20 to 40 to 60, 80, 100 and 120, like that's a lot within the course of a week. So by her challenging us to do five, five more each day, it was more achievable than to be overwhelmed by thinking that you got to add 20 every single time that you go back to do this workout. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start. I do have my goals for each um, or my statements for each pillar. Um, you can do this with me um, or you can pause here and come back to it or if you're watching the replay. But if you're here to create with me and you have your junk journal, let's go ahead and um, we'll get into it. So. Let me go ahead and adjust the camera. I'm going to put you down on the workspace. And then I'm going to join you for the actual junk journaling activity. Let me see if I can. There we go. That's kind of good. All right. So I might have to decorate upside down since you can't really see my book. Oh. And this is actually my morning pages book. So every morning I write three pages. Um, if you've seen my video on how to overcome creative blocks, uh, one of the suggestions that I made was actually writing morning pages. And I discovered this method from Julia Cameron. She's the author of Artist Way. So every morning I wake up and I write three pages just to get whatever's on my mind off my mind. <laughs> and give me clarity before I go to work. So um, I have a few remaining pages from last year's journal or December journal, I, I should say. And um, I don't want to leave them blank, even though I'm moving on to my next journal. I was going to continue this and then go into the new journal once these pages were filled, but it's only a couple. So I was like, I don't, uh, it just, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to start with a new journal in January and so for December, the remainder of these pages, I'm gonna go ahead and decorate. We're gonna use them for junk journaling. All right, so for tonight's inspiration, came from this, this picture. I'm not sure who the artist is, but I found this online and I like it because it's got the different colors. Um, I do wanna recreate this in my own style at one point. So stay tuned for that, you guys will see it. But I also like it because for each category, I could use a different color. So I already have my paint selected. Um, usually, or sometimes I will use cardstock paper, which is, you know, you've seen them at Michael's, you see them at Walmart. They have the big packets of paper with different designs and patterns. So this is what I was referring to earlier when I mentioned that I was using paper as my background for my vision board to kind of give it color or a template so if you wanted to you could do the same you could use paper construction paper paint stencils whatever is your go-to whatever you feel comfortable with doing uh, my suggestion is that 
you know, I don't want you to go out and buy all new brand, all new supplies just to do this one project. So if you have things that you haven't used or art supplies that, you know, you've been saving for a good time, this might be the time that you want to use them. Um, but yeah, don't go out and buy new supplies. But if you do, if you want to purchase these things, the, um, I recommend you do that after the holidays or sometimes Michael's will have a sale because this packet itself has, it can depend. They can have 40, they can have 20. Um, sometimes it depends on what is on the paper or what patterns you get. So it can become a little bit pricey. But if you go when they're having sales, these can actually go all the way down to $10 or $5 sometimes. So just, just an FYI. All right. So I'm going to start with my fit pillar, which is what I've already talked to you about with my goals for working out and running the crown. So with my red, I have this little rubbery um, tool that I got recently. And I'm just going to use it with my stencils here to see what happens. I don't know if you can see it on camera because it's clear. These are things I've had in my in my tools, but I haven't been able to use them. So let's see how it works today. Oh, that's nice. Uh oh, okay. Oops, I still got some red. It's on my pink. Now we're gonna lift it neatly. Lift it. Oh no, that's too much. My pattern didn't stay. That's okay. See, we're learning as we go. <laughs> I'm kind of, gonna kind of hurry. Now it's transferring. And then now, let's see if we can go. What's already on the stencil onto the paper? Nope, no success. Because I have too much there. I actually have my paintbrushes here with me. So in front of me, what you don't see on camera is a lot of supplies that I have. I have some stencils, I have some stamps, I have washi tape, the cardstock paper I just showed you, scissors, glue, paint brushes, paint. I have a color for each pillar that I'm going to do. So for my fit pillar, I have red. For my people pillar, which is the one that I have to focus on more this year, or I feel like I want to focus on it more, um, is yellow. I'm like we gotta highlight this so it's it's in yellow. So I picked yellow for my people pillar. Um I have like a metallic blue color. It's one of my favorites. Well it's not blue, I think it's green, greenish blue, cobalt blue. See that metallic color to it? I like it. So that's gonna be for my uh what's the third one? My space pillar. And then for my eighth pillar, I got the color purple because it represents royalty. So this didn't work out too well on this side. That's fine. I'm just going to use the remainder of my paint. It just, oh, actually, and if you have something under your page that you don't want to be affected by the paint that you're putting on this page, I always suggest just putting a paper under that way. It keeps it clean. Okay, so what would go with my fit pillar? I have a spin bike that I want to ride, so I might find something, hopefully, that's related to a bike. Um, running, water, maybe a big old can of soda with a line through it. I don't know. It's all up to you. It's what, And it's also what you find, because I know you can have different resources. Um, some of us can have access to magazines and others don't, so here we go. I'm going to put Embrace Your Own Journey, Dream Big. So I've got some cardstock paper here already cut out. I'm just looking through. So what I do um, for my background is usually decide, like right here, my background is going to be red. So I'm just going to try and find papers, um, markers, anything that might be similar to red right here. 
and can be used on this page, I will use it on this page. Anything that's red, I'm probably going to be pulling it in. Um, or physical fitness, those kind of things. So now focusing more on junk journaling, I like to start with my background, uh, whether it's going to be an entire page cover up or just one page or just one section. I also have to remember that I'm creating upside down. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter because it's going to be in a book and it's mostly. So what the reason why I'm putting it in a book is because what if I want to go somewhere? I can't take my vision board with me. You could take a screenshot or like not a screenshot. You could take a picture of your um, vision board and save it as a screenshot. I mean, <laughs> as, a, as a wallpaper, I keep saying screenshot, but you could save it as a wallpaper. That way you always have access to it and you can always see it. You're reminded of what you're working toward. Um, but uh, you can't always take the vision board with you. So this is the reason why I wanted to put it in a book. And actually, uh, Michelle, if you're watching, my friend Michelle, she started this process. I and mean, she probably didn't know that she was mixing uh, visual journaling with the vision board until we were talking about it today. I was like, you know, Michelle, you're already doing this like two years ago when we started <laughs> our vision board. So she actually took the the materials that she had for the vision board and made a book out of it and started making what we're doing today. So pretty interesting. Oh, I'm just looking to do my supplies to see what I've got and what else might work. What are all the rest of my papers? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to reach over here for my stickers. I'm not quite ready for that yet. We're still working on backgrounds. What could be? Okay, so this is part of my background. I'm going to grab the paper that I just showed you and I'm going to look through here for some red. Let's move this out of the way for them. Hey, Olivia. I know it's been a while. I'm glad to be back, too. I'm glad to be back. I'm glad you could join me. Um, so tonight I'm doing junk journaling um, and to prepare for your vision board. I kind of just gave a run through of my method. I actually shot it out. Um, oh, you know what, you guys? <clears throat> that passion and purpose workbook I just showed you. <clears throat> The lady, the creative genius who made it, is actually here. <laughs> Olivia. Olivia's awesome. All right, so basically I'm looking for red. Anything? Oh, this is red. Let's use this. Yeah, so I gave him a run-through of my method um, and how I prepare for our vision board party. And I was telling them how courage helped us to break down our goals from like a whole year into smaller manageable tasks. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to get some water. <laughs> Ooh, some pink. Olivia, you can use this page. <laughs> All right, so I don't see anything. Oh, there's some red. Before I finished my sentence. It's like, hold up. Oh, this is nice. This kind of looks like what I've already started. Okay, I think that's plenty. I need only. Ooh, pretty. Plenty. All right. So, just to reiterate, my big goal for the year is to become a runner. I am focusing on this so that, or I am building my stamina and my endurance so that I could run around the crown or participate in the around the crown marathon in 2023 and so the small things i do this year will benefit me next year and also the things that i select on this year will be a consequence to what happens next year so if you've heard 
the quotation, um, your choices today dictate your future. Um, that's basically what that is. <laughs> Do the work today, you can see the results tomorrow. All right, so I'm just finding different ways. So I'm not always like neat when it comes to this because most of this is going to be covered as well. So you see, even though I had this paint there, it, it got messy when that stencil didn't work. So what I'm doing now is I'm just covering it with paper. Just covering it up. And then this paper is also going to get covered as well. For any of you um, who like creating on the digital platform, if you're familiar with Canva and adding elements to your your graphic, this is basically the same thing, except you're doing it with your own hands. You're cutting out the paper yourself. You're creating <laughs> the the brush strokes on your own. You can't just grab it and stick it on there. You're, you're the one doing it. The other great thing about visual journaling is it's not so much about the finished product. I mean, this one might be because it's our visual journal. I mean, it's our, our vision board. But um, usually I don't worry too much about perfection or the finished piece but I really focus on the process. It's the time that I took to sit here and allow myself to create. To not overthink what I'm doing too much or try not to overthink what I'm doing too much. Um, to accept that sometimes things don't go as planned. Like, you know, I had this whole idea that it was going to be painted red with the stencil, but turns out the stencil didn't work. So <laughs> here we are with my original process, which is cutting out paper and put it on the background. I kind of like this one. Maybe I'll do it this way. Oh, yeah, that works better. That looks better. And it's kind of more so of how you feel or how it makes you feel. In the verse, I gotta create this and it's gotta look a certain way. So I don't know if it's if that's a good thing or a bad thing for you. <laughs> All right. Okay, so after the background, what we're gonna start doing is you can add images. Oops, I think I had it this way. You can add images, you can add statements or quotations. Um, if you have stamps. If you have, um, I forgot the word for images that you are, you know, temporary experiences. You save them like, you know, like concert tickets, fortune cookie messages. <laughs> um, what else is there? Maybe random raffle tickets or seating tickets that would normally be like a movie ticket on movie stuff. You know, it's intentional for you know you to get your ticket and to show it at the gate so that way they know you're coming into the right theater and you get the right seat if it's one of those places that has the reserved seating um and that's its only purpose right but if you keep it and you put it in your book or you want to keep it because it's like you know your first uh time watching a movie for whatever reason or the first movie you saw when you moved to a new state whatever it is whatever reason you're saving it you can also add those in the junk journal just like birthday cards and Christmas cards, you know, those kind of things usually get thrown away. Um, people who like to keep them end up having them as like junk all over the place, which is you know, junk journal. <laughs> you can actually put them in your vision, your vision journal, a visual journal. I almost called it a vision board. Oh, I found another stock of paper. Here we go. Let's see what this has. These ones are a little bit lighter or thinner. And when you're looking for backgrounds, or what I do is I just find something. Because sometimes you can get overwhelmed. Like, oh, I like this. I like this. I like this. Or I want to use that. But you have to focus on what you're working on. And so what I usually do is I'll just flip through. And if nothing catches my eye or, like, really jumps out at me, um, I'm like, okay, I didn't find anything. Just like now. Didn't really see anything. Um. So how will I be able to, again, this isn't my vision board. It's just helping me to prepare for it. 
but I do want things related to it. So like I mentioned, we can't always take our vision board with us. But if we have something smaller that we could take, we could just like this one here, embrace your own journey because someone else preparing for this same marathon may have a different approach, may have a different method, may have a different body, may have different eating habits, you know, nothing is the same for all of us. And so you have to be mindful that your journey might look different from other people. It doesn't mean that you're not on track. It just means that your, your route is going to be different. So I'm getting my markers out. I have permanent markers. And I'm just going to write over here. Upside down. Oops, that's kind of messy. <laughs> you like my writing? <laughs> it's upside down. This should also be upside down. I'm creating for you guys, or I'm putting this together. Uh, keeping in mind that you guys can only see the one direction. I'm going to use some tape to put this down because it's a thicker paper and I'm not too sure if the glue stick is going to keep it down. So I'm just going to use tape here and to the corner and then I'll put my paper. So, and then here's um, another example of how you can add inserts to your junk journal. Or your, see, I'm going to have to also retrain myself to start calling them visual journals. <laughs> the benefit of your visual journal is you can add this. So you could even have a little flip thing here in the middle. And I might do that. I might have a bike. Let's see if I can find a bike that keeps coming up. So with my big goal, Olivia, I don't know if you were here when I mentioned it, but because my big goal is to participate in the marathon. I'm going to be using my spin bike. You know, it's cold right now, and I don't feel like going running outside. <laughs> so, my spin bike is what's going to help me get there. Um, my original, uh, or for the month of January, is to hit 30 minutes nonstop. If I can ride the bike 30 minutes nonstop before then, then at that point, I will add 15 minutes. That way it'll become 45 minutes nonstop. And then from there, another 15 minutes will become an hour nonstop. My goal is to reach um, two hours. Once I reach two hours nonstop, was it one hour and a half or two hours? I think it was two hours. So once I reach the two hours, I'm hoping that I will have that by May, May or June, once it gets warmer. And then I'm going to transition over into um redoing the p90x program or actually running i'm looking for a bike and i'm probably not in the best sticker book so let's keep looking i might not find it yet. oh where's the travel one the travel stickers might have a bike there we go travel 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 let's see if we can find a bike Okay, yeah, so once I transition over to P90X or running, I'm going to do that for three months, I think is what I said, or until it starts getting cold, which is in, oh, there we go, look, I found a bike, it says let's roll. Um, once it starts cooling down again, that's when I'll return back inside for the spin bike and finish the year by doing the same thing, except when I restart on the spin bike, I'm pretty sure I will at least be able to maintain running 45 minutes to an hour nonstop and then continue from there. It's basically just to get my body used to the cardio that I'm going to need to be able to uh, have by May of next year. Uh, don't really see anything on bikes and I'm limited to what I have on me. But what I'm doing, again, is, you know, this isn't the final product. This is just kind of an idea to help me. So now 
if I were to take this idea onto my actual vision board, it will look like the one I created back in 2020, where I have the cardstock as the color. Oh, let me come up here. There we go. So you see how I have different cardstock as my pattern? You've got some zebra, or what? what is this? This, this print over here. <laughs> you got some print over here with a peacock feather, some flowers. Um, this is actually from a, a birthday. It's a magazine picture of like a celebration. I, this is so interesting. Wow. So it says 32 on here. I was turning 32 that year and it says celebrate birthdays because I had never celebrated my birthdays. My birthdays weren't celebrated. Um, and I actually felt weird about being celebrated. <laughs> so I told myself that in, in um, October of 2020, I would at least acknowledge my birthday or do something for my birthday. So that's why that's on there to, to celebrate my birthday. Um, yeah. So you see different colors. This is also like a blue area over here. Um, this itself is a magazine page about peace. And I had, you know, again, I prayed about what I was going to be creating on my vision board. So I knew there was going to be a section on peace. I, I, like I said, four years before I had been focusing on my emotional and mental health. And this year I get to focus on my physical health. So this, my mental health has some uh, little piece that I wrote to myself about peace. And when I found this page, I was like, oh, this is perfect. You can go right there. So that went together. Um, I also had this up here where it's like the landscape. My word for the year was impact. But do you see these mountains, this background? It was the sky behind the mountains. That, that was what the picture was. And then I added my own things to it. So I put impact on there. Um, don't be afraid and remain faithful. Those were what I was going to help. You know, that's what's going to help me throughout my journey. <laughs> Um, again, I was focusing on my time management, so that's on there as well. All different things. So you can see where I use different pieces of paper as my background. And then once I found all the cutouts and things that I wanted, then it came together. So as far as this, I'm not too concerned that I don't have images at the moment um, for, for my goals. What I can do is now that I've got this page set, I know what it looks like. Um, so I can go and print, print some different things. I can print some quotes or I can make my own. Uh, so I'm going to add this here maybe. We'll see. Oh, look. I'll slide this here for now. That way I'll know that I'm going to put that there. But as far as what I want to say or how I'm going to remind myself of what my big goal is, I could also write that. If you're someone who believes in adding scripture, to your goals or um, praying scripture over what you're going to, I would suggest you can also get those scriptures and write them out. Um, that's actually here with my resources. So <laughs> I was showing you guys the workbooks that I use and stuff. And so I have my Bible here too, is because you always want to have something that's going to encourage you. Um, one suggestion that I have too is basically creating a plan in a time of peace. Let me go so you guys can see. All right. So creating a plan in a time of peace is like what's going to keep you motivated? What's going to help you when the struggle does get hard? Like for me with my working out and stuff, what if I don't want to work out? What if telling myself that if I don't do it today, um, I won't be able to run the crown in 2023? What if that's not enough to get me to go work out? What if that's just like, oh, I give up entirely on the goal? Like <laughs> we can't have that. Right. So what are you going to do? What What are you going to put in place so that when those days come, you'll keep going. Um, sometimes we need an accountability partner. Sometimes you can recruit somebody to join you in your workout program. Um, sometimes you need a go-to scripture. Sometimes you could have a song that could calm you down in that moment or that could help you through a certain period. Uh, I have a friend that has a cry playlist. I don't know if, who's on here. Maybe, maybe you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, based on what you're going through, like for me, uh, one of my I am statements for my fit pillar, I believe it is. I would think it's my fit. No, it's my faith pillar. Uh, in my faith pillar, I wrote, I am able to hold on. Let me let me get it for you, because it has to do with my past that I'm also getting through. But it's still something that I might encounter. Um, 
like I knew I had PTSD, but I hadn't actually experienced something with it again. And then when I did, like everything that I had, like, oh, I'll do this. I'll remind myself to think this way. I'll remind myself in that moment that I'll do this. <laughs> when it actually happens, all of that went out the window. It didn't even matter. <laughs> so, that's what I'm saying. When you create a plan during peace, it helps. Because even though the other things didn't work out for me, I still had a place to go to feel safe again. And so what I wrote is that I am... Where is it? Oh, maybe it isn't in my faith pillar. I thought it was in my faith pillar. Oh, it's in my, um, it's a, it is in my faith pillar with my em emotional health. It says, I am capable of standing firm in my faith when experiencing a trigger moment. So I had the fear and I freaked out because I forgot everything I knew about God. I forgot what he brought me through. I forgot <laughs> that that was the past. I forgot that I'm not even that person anymore. So after the fact, those are the things that helped me and reminded me I'm still good. I'm okay. It was only for a moment. It was temporary. But these are this is why we're putting this together is I'm hoping that you'll be able to take your visual journal with you and keep it with you um, and do this throughout the year because it can actually serve as a reminder at the end of the year when you're doing your reflections. You know, some of us can go through uh, what I did was I went through my Facebook memories and pulled up some of the things, seen some of the posts that I put on there. Uh, that's also why I'm intentional about what I'm posting. Uh, sometimes it might not make sense to other people. <laughs> it's not It's not for them. Sometimes it's more like, oh, when this pops up in my memories, I'll know what it was about. <laughs> so there's that. Also pictures, everything, anything. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is it's not going to be a finished product today. And I'm not expecting you to have a finished product, but I'm just hoping that you will be able to see the process of the visual journaling and also how to do your goals. That's that's for the vision board stuff. So if you came here for that, I hope that helps you. Um, I put links in the bottom if you're interested in going to the vision board party, if you're here in the Charlotte area, if you're a lady in the Charlotte area and um, the passion and purpose workbook. That helps a whole lot because you're not only reflecting on what you've been through, you're also reviewing like what helped, what didn't work, what's going to you know keep you going or what's going to help you. And then you get to plan for the different pillars that I was telling you about or similar um, because the pillars that I used were from Patrice Washington. They're similar to what Courage has in her workbook. Um, and then from there, you change your thought process and you're shifting into the point where you've already achieved these goals, where you're writing about what you're going to feel or how it's going to feel once you're already there. So I am a runner is because <laughs> look, my, my goal to get there is on a spin bike. <laughs> so that might not even make sense to some people, but because I know my body and how I am and that I love spinning rather than running. That's, that's where I put that in. That's how I put those together. And the other thing is that when it comes to spinning, I actually know how I can I can encourage myself to push harder. I can add the resistance on it and not feel mad at myself for doing it. As to if I go running and I don't know the track and I don't know how long how much longer I have to run, um, that can be defeating for me. Like I I get worn out, I get <laughs> I get distracted, I give up, I'll stop running in the middle of the run just to be like I, I, I'm done. <laughs> But when it comes to spinning, I can push myself. So that's the route that I'm using. Um, so do whatever works for you. Remember that these goals are for you and also what's going to be attainable for you in this next year. So uh, like, for example, for me, I would love to have be fit, have a six pack um, arms tone and everything. But I can't do that in a year. <laughs> I mean, I probably could. But do you see how much I would have to? If I prioritize that and only that and the things, the sacrifices that I would have to make, the changes that I would have to make, it would be too drastic for me. Um, someone just now, I would say I'm like an intermediate work person that's working out because I'm not a very beginner, but I'm also not as strong as I used to be. <laughs> I'm also not as fast as I used to be. Um, there was a point in time when I could run a mile and a half in 10 minutes and 13 seconds. And I'm hoping that I can get back there. 
um, I do know what helped me to get there. So I built, I, that's why I built this um, system for myself is the push-ups, the squats, and the riding of my spin bike. All right. So even though a long-term goal would be that I want to be fit and in better health and shape, I'm actually still recovering from what I've been doing. So I'm also in the mindset area of this is I have to be kind to myself. I have to be grateful for my body and what it did and the changes that it made for me to survive through depression. So you have to remind yourself, how did you gain the weight or how did you get to this point? Because it didn't happen overnight either. And whatever choices you made to get here, you're also going to have to make choices to get to where you want to go. So there's that. And with the vision board or with your visual journaling, it's the same thing. Your first time creating isn't going to look as great or it might not even <laughs> be what you thought it would be. Like with this, like I, it's crazy messy. Um, I thought I was going to be able to have my pattern on here, but the that was just too much paint for the stencil and that's fine. I can figure it out later. This is more so for um, my painting anyway. But yeah, there's that. And then um, let's move on. Let's let's keep working, all right? I'm gonna put you back down. This is just my template for my fit pillar, which is the color red that I chose. Uh, there we go. You guys can see me. I'm gonna flip the page. So this is basically, I know what I'm gonna create here, all right? Now here is the yellow. And again, I chose the color yellow because, and I'm not going to use the pink because I found out that it's too much. It's too thick. Where are we at? 56 minutes. Okay. Let me see if I can find anything yellow here. So anyway, what I was saying with not having all the images and things that I need right now, it at least gives me an idea, like now I'm gonna go look for some images that have to do with this, or I'm gonna find some pictures in a magazine. So when you do show up for the vision board party and you know what you're focusing on, when you're looking through those magazines, you won't be overwhelmed of like, oh, I like this. Oh, I want that. Oh, I'm gonna put that on there too. Oh, maybe I want this. <laughs> you know, you have to remember what can you achieve in a year? Are you looking at a vision board as what you want in your life, like long term goal, or are you focusing? on right now and this year so it's up to you i guess if you want if you are somebody that can see very far ahead for years to come and still create goals to achieve that within this year then by all means go ahead and make your vision board to represent that but if you're someone who's like me who only needs to focus on what's right now <laughs> and not get overwhelmed then this is the best place to start is just to, I guess this is the only yellow I have in this book. I have plenty more of these um, booklets with papers as well. So I'm not too worried about what I can't use today. This is just a demonstration to show you guys what it looks like and how it starts. So the first process is the background. Let me actually show you guys a page that's complete. So we're not just watching me start random pages and then not finish. Let's see. Here we go. Here's the page. So the background is my theme actually came from wanting to use these papers. I bought some new materials for my junk journaling, and this is what they look like. And so I took a few of those pages out. I was like, let's create. I want to make something to show them off. And that's what I did here. So I have a black background, and all I did was crumple paper and glue it on so it gives it like a texture. And then I have the planets. This is actually all one page or this section right here. And I tore them up. So I separated it and used different elements from there. In background, there's washi tape. Um, even with the butterflies right here, it says um, every little thing. Oh, enjoy the little things. <laughs> I almost said every little thing's gonna be all right. Like it's Bob Marley. <laughs> it says enjoy the little things. So that goes with that and has some flower print washi tape because it's the butterflies. And here I actually used washi tape as my background. Oh, actually, that's a good idea. I don't have no yellow. Some more yellow. That's going to be a whole big page for washi tape, though, right? This is, yeah, that might be too much. Too much. So that's my process of both the vision board and. <laughs> 
Frustration is your friend. That's um, actually from Pastor Furtick, Stephen Furtick. Okay, so there's more pages to come. And this is how far I've gotten in this book. Oh, this is a look at this. This is so cool. So these are actually pockets. You can create pockets too. And we'll go through this. I have some uh, videos that I'm going to make for you guys with junk journaling. So we'll go more into this where you, I can show you ideas of how to create different things or different elements. So all I did was cut out a piece of paper and I take the bottom corners to kind of give it a flat. And then I use it as a pocket. So these things are related to it. Um, I also keep pockets like this in case I want to create with something later, but I don't have the time. I'll just stick it in there. I like how this is in the pocket, but also has this cover in it. Like it's it's cool. It's like a little pop up. If you were a kid who had pop up books, <laughs> that's kind of where that idea came from. It's like it's it's just like bringing out something creative. All right, so yellow will continue here. I don't know if I'm gonna continue working on this tonight. But I hope that I was able to answer some questions that you may have had about junk journaling as far as the process itself and what's required or what isn't necessary. Um, you can use whatever you have. I have these little ink pads and my stamps. So I have these here that you can actually take off. And some of them are inspirational quotes too as well. So I might use those on my page. Basically, this is just to help you get in the process of creating, of putting your ideas and your goals from what's in your head onto a page. That way, when you see it, you'll be reminded of what you're working on. Um, let's see. Oh, the other part I was going to say, too, is that when you have the vision board, that's going to have like the big goal on it. So for me on my fit pillar, I'm going to have something related to running the crown. I'm going to have like maybe a water bottle because I need to hydrate. That's also in my goals is to keep hydrating because um, it's going to help me. I'm going to have to stop drinking soda or I have stopped drinking soda. I just got to maintain it um, because I don't like drinking water. I went out and bought myself a new water bottle that I like. Oh, look, I actually only got a little more left, you guys, um, which is, I've, I've drank a lot. I haven't drank that much water. In <laughs> I don't drink water like that. So the water bottle is helping. I got this two days ago. And so today's my first day filling it up and I'm actually drinking from it. So it's working. Um, the other thing is, let's see. Oh, I want it to improve or be more consistent in prayer. So what did I do? Yesterday, I created my prayer room. So that's another thing. So what steps can you do now? What little things can you do to get you to your big goal? So don't don't overwhelm yourself with trying to think of in this lifetime, I want to achieve such and such and then try and accomplish it in one year. Like <laughs> that's too scary. That's too daunting. And then you're going to feel like you didn't accomplish anything. Um, so, yeah. So what were some of the things that I mentioned is. Um, Take the big goal and then break it down into quarters of the year. So the first quarter, the second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. Then from there, you get to go into each month. What am I going to focus on for this month? And then as you come or approach to that month, you can sit down and look at how many weeks are in that month. What am I going to do each week um, or what tasks need to be done during the week to accomplish that big task at the end of the week that will contribute to the big goal at the end of the month that contributes to the bigger goal at the end of the quarter, which contributes to your big goal at the end of the year. So the best way to eat an elephant, one bite at a time, right? <laughs> so that's how we get there. That's how we help ourselves not to freak out, but also feel like we're moving along. And the other thing too, is like, if it doesn't work out the way you thought it would, don't be hard on yourself. Just keep moving or pivot. Find a different way that might help you achieve your goal. Um, definitely, you know, pray. Because like I mentioned, uh, there were some goals that I had in 2020. And even though I was focused in one area and I was making steps, in intentional steps toward that goal, um, I joined P2P because I wanted to get clarity on my message for my book. But what turned out 
or what came out of P2P was not just, you know, my message and clarity on it and how to retell my story for others to learn from it. But that's when I found out that my creativity wasn't just a hobby and that I could actually do more with it. And then somehow I ended up on YouTube. <laughs> so here we go. This is how it happened. And the reason why I said to pray about it is because we can think that we want to do something a certain way, but God might have a different plan. And he'll definitely bring you people that can help you on that journey. So there's that. I hope it helped. I hope you guys have a good night. I'm just checking the comments over here to see if anybody else said anything. Scripture. Yeah, definitely scripture. I like having scripture to back up my goals or to encourage me. Um, praying scripture is also powerful. So if you are somebody who prays and you're going to, you're, you're definitely going to be praying about the things that you're trying to achieve. So when you go through those pillars or those areas, make sure you add scripture to it. Um, again, this just helps me to know what I'm going to do when I go to the vision board party. So then I'm not sitting there because, you know, when you go to a vision board party, you're only given a certain amount of time. So you want to use that time to the best of your benefit. Um, the creative process, I think, is a little bit easier once you know what your your goal is going to be or what you're moving towards. So. I hope I didn't overwhelm you by trying not to, you know, by trying to help you not be overwhelmed about the visual journal or the visual vision board party. I hope I didn't make it harder for you, but I hope I broke down um, my process clear enough for you to see. And I hope I answered any questions that you might have about junk journaling. Um, this isn't going to be the only time that I do this. Again, I mentioned that we're going to continue with the videos that I have in January. And I want to actually teach you guys more about the different things that you could use or do in your visual journal, um, not just with the backgrounds and stuff, but like pockets using stencils. Um, oh, some people use envelopes to make the junk journal itself. Um, you can use different little, I can't remember the name. There's a name for the ticket stubs and stuff when you create them or when you keep them and then you use them in your visual journal. I have to find it. I think it starts with the E, but that's it. That's all I have for you tonight. Um, be fearless. Stay creative. Have a good night. And let's see. Thank you. Oh, actually, Happy New Year. And thank you for joining me. Thank you for, for sticking with me and being on this creative journey with me. Uh, it's now been a year, a year that I've been on YouTube. <laughs> Again, I mentioned I didn't mean to abandon you all. And, you know, the last quarter of 2021 was just really rough for me and I had to take a break and I'm, I'm glad I'm still here. I'm glad <laughs> everything's all good. And I have good things coming for us. Um, Ooh, do you see this canvas behind me? This really big, it's a, there we go. It is a 24 by 36 inch canvas. That is like the biggest canvas I've ever done. So make sure you stay tuned because that's going to turn into an abstract painting. And I have another one over here on this side that's going to turn into a Dutch pour. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared, but I'm excited. I can't wait. Um, I think the the main thing I'm intimidated by is not just the size of the canvas, but the paint that's going to be required. Like I'm going to have to do more than I normally do. Um, I'm going to be using my blow dryer for that project. So I'm a little nervous, um, but it's going to happen. I'm still going to do it. You guys know that I'm here as your creative confidence mentor. And what that means is that I'm sharing my artistic journey with you. I started on YouTube not knowing what I was doing, both on YouTube and in my <laughs> in my creating. <laughs> but I did it because I wanted to show that, you know, all of us are creatives and that we all have this one area or maybe several areas where we're great at being creative. And um, that's one of the things that I do is painting. So as I'm learning, as I'm growing, you guys are able to watch me. You guys can see how I created or the process of me creating. So that's going to be a portion of the channel. You know, that's a continuation of what you guys already been seeing is like, I'll come live and you guys will watch me create. Um, but I'm also adding in the section of the junk journaling or short videos of how to 
Um, that way I'm actually giving you practical ways that you can be creative, like uh, maybe last minute Valentine's Day cards or something <laughs> using what you have. So look out for that. I'm going to have videos coming out again um the end of the year was just crazy for me so i was hoping and planning to have videos pre-recorded and then premiering in january which is this month um i don't know how soon that's gonna happen but i'm still here if we need to we'll go live and we'll create together otherwise um let's continue being creative and wherever it is that you shine if it's in building if it's in cooking if it's in organizing or creating curriculum or just designing somebody's dream home or the interior of someone, you know, those, those are gifts. Not everybody has them. So embrace it and make sure that you're using it to help others and to serve them where you're able to. All right. Have a good night. It was good hanging out with you and I'll see you next time. Bye.